When Jesus saved me, I understood it to be an all or nothing transaction. I mean, quite literally, I believe that if he wanted me to give my life for the gospel, then I was willing to give it. And he not only broke the chains of sin when he saved me, he also broke the chains of fear. You see, as a young child, I grew up with this overwhelming fear of death. And I didn't grow up in the church. In fact, I don't think my parents ever took me to church in their life except for one funeral. The first time in my life I ever heard the gospel, I was 13 years old and my next door neighbors came by to talk to me. They stumbled their way through it. I don't think they even knew what they were doing, but they cared about me. They shared the gospel with me and they introduced me to a savior who loved me enough to give his life for me. And I knelt by the side of my bed that night and I surrendered my soul to Jesus Christ and he radically, totally changed me. Not just my sin, but he dealt with at that instant, the fear of death. A few years later, I'm a senior in high school and I decide to join the US Army and I wanna become an Army Ranger. I wanna join the special operations. I wanna serve with the greatest warriors on earth. I'm a Christian, I'm practicing my faith. I'm trying to tell people Bible stories and share a little bit of what I believe. But frankly, I really didn't get serious about becoming a fisher of men until an instant on a battlefield that I wish I could get back. I'm a Christian soldier in the army. I'm kicking in doors. I've been killing bad guys on battlefields in Panama and in Kuwait. And in 1993, I get sent to Mogadishu, Somalia, and I'm over there as part of Task Force Ranger Black Hawk Down. And there's a guy who's sitting inches from me in the back seat of my Humvee. His name is Dominic Pilla. And Pilla and I had some conversations together. We talked about family. We talked about friends. We maybe even talked about the Bible. But I didn't really get serious with Pilla about heaven and hell. And then we're in this battle. And I won't ruin your lunch, but Pilla is shot and he's killed instantly. And when I say instantly, I mean before his body hit the ground, he was gone. And at that moment, it occurred to me, Jeff, you've never talked to him about heaven and hell. And now it's too late. And you can never get that back. And that was the moment that God attached for me, this gospel urgency that I think should go with every Christian who understands the Great Commission. I mean, God is sending us to go out and to impact the world for King Jesus. In fact, the Holy Spirit punched me in the face at this instant and helped me realize, Jeff, your job as a Christian soldier is not just to prepare warriors to meet the enemy. It's to prepare them for eternity. And you've been missing that. So that was the moment that God really started to change the direction of my life. He called me into ministry. I became an army chaplain. I eventually retired from the army and became a pastor of a church. And can I be honest with you? I got really frustrated when I looked at the local church because I didn't see this gospel urgency in the church. I saw apathy and uh, unconcern, a lack of concern for friends and neighbors who weren't on their way to heaven. And so I struggled and I was frustrated until one day I heard a seminary issue a clarion call to this denomination and to Christians all over the world, come to this institution and we will train you up and we will send you out to the hard places to go to the dangerous places and do difficult things for the glory of God. And I thought, thank God there's finally a seminary who's taking the Great Commission seriously. Folks, I'm just gonna tell you, I am absolutely convinced, please hear me, that we have the resources and we have the reach to finish the Great Commission in our lifetime. I believe this is the generation that can do it. And I am convinced this school is taking that mission seriously. 
Man, I want to tell you, I am so proud of the board of trustees at the College of Southeastern and at Southeastern Seminary. I'm proud of the faculty. They're raising up men and women who are going all over the globe and taking the glorious gospel of our great Savior with them. And I'm proud of our president. I'm proud to be able to stand in the ranks with these holy warriors who will finish the mission, and I hope to see it in my lifetime.